Lab Code Agents, thanks for joining us. Today we've got Dan Corkle from Follow Up Boss. He's the, are you the creator and co-founder or co-creator co-founder, Dan? Uh, the second one. The second co -co one. Founder. Yeah. I love it. All right, dude. Well, you, uh, you're the first person that I met in regards to Follow Up Boss way back when you guys created this. And I remember we, we talked on the phone and we didn't get to meet until like five, six years later, but it's, uh, you guys have done yeah. absolutely amazing with follow up boss. Uh, one question, how did you come up with the name follow up boss? Uh, yeah, we we're just talking to a lot of real estate agents and that everyone was like, I know I'll definitely make more money if I follow it up more. And so that's where the follow up part came from. We're like, okay, I just kept hearing that again and again. And then, you know, the boss part, we were just then we're looking for domains that were available, you know, and like, that was it. Right? <laughs> that was so easy. Follow up boss. Yep. $10 or whatever. Dude, I love that. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about how to increase your conversion. Five easy steps. Now, these are the steps that I use for my team. So they're, they're actually super simple and we've been teaching them for a while now. So don't be surprised about how simple they are now. Dan's going to also be showing you the features on the back end. He's going to be sharing the screen as, as we kind of go through this and do a deep dive into the CRM because we do use follow up boss as our main CRM for everything that we do. And we've been using them for eight years now. You came out in 2011. Yep. Yeah. So and yeah, we, we joined in, in 11, maybe like a few months after. You guys had very few people, then we stopped, and then we came back through Curator, and then right. we stayed, and then we left Curator, and then we stayed with you guys, and then uh, we just kept on going deeper and deeper and deeper, and now we're here, man. So let's start with uh, the back end of Follow Boss. Let's pop it open. Let's share your screen. Um, sure. You know, kind of guide everybody through it. So this one right here, you see that's this is the main screen that pops up where you have the recent activity for everything that's in follow up boss, regardless of where the lead is coming from. It's going to show up, whether it's coming from Ylopo, realtor.com, Zillow, whatever you have tied to this. And then you can see on the far end uh, who it's assigned to on the team. All right, let's, let's go to Steven. Let's just choose the first one, dude. Steven. Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Chichi. All right, so let's let's say we've got Steven here and he's on my list to call. What I normally do is uh, I choose who to call based on who's gone, who's come to our website or who's had the most recent activity first. Now, I'm assuming it's gonna be Steven uh, just because he was the first one up there. And let's start with the five processes. Now, I, I always start with calling and that's because um, not only do I have a background in calling, I was a telemarketer for years while I was in high school and into college. So I love picking up the phone and actually calling people. But the important thing is that you still have to talk to people. As great as text is and as great of a conversion as a conversion factor that is, you know, 80% of people pick up text and respond to it. Still talking to people is pretty deep. So what we do, you see Steven, on the left side there, you have a little icon of a phone underneath Steven's name. And when we click on that phone, what happens is it, it, the dialer starts dialing. So we actually use the follow-up boss dialer. I would click on the phone. And then if he picks up, obviously I engage with him, right? But if he doesn't, I let it ring three or four times and then I hang up. And then I wait about 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, I do the exact same thing. I go to the phone, that little phone icon, I click it again, click on the phone, and then I wait until this time the voicemail picks up. And in the voicemail, I leave a simple voice message. Let's say uh, Steven doesn't pick up. I say, hey, Steven, it's Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. Hope you're having a great day. You went on our website and you were looking at homes in the Los Angeles area through Facebook, I want to get a better idea of what you're looking for, just so I don't spam you. When you have a chance, call me back or text me to this same number. Again, this is Tristan. Have a great day. Then I hang up. Uh, as soon as I hang up, what happens is uh, it logs the call. So you see at the very top where it says create note, send email, text. 
And this pops up and you can say, well, no answer, left voicemail or bad number. What we do immediately is we click on left voicemail. This way, if our ISAs are there or an agent that I'm gonna give this to knows that I just left a voicemail and there you go. So right after that, I'm not done. Uh, I'm not done because I've only done a third of the things that I need to do here to make sure that, that we're following up completely with them. So the next thing I do is I go to the, the text section right here, and I'm going to just text directly from there. Now, the reason it's shaded out is because Dan's team, they shaded the, the whole areas here for privacy. So this way you guys don't see Stephen's cell phone number, his email address, and anything that we type yeah. in. What we can do, Tristan, is like I'll just I'll just pop open like another test contact just oh, so everyone can see like maybe how the dialer works and yeah yeah the Show actual me that, texting because yeah, I'd yeah. like to see that I just I'm going to take people through the process so they understand how how the yeah, two things totally. go hand in hand too. All right, Dan, perfect. Yeah, you don't have to block out your phone number. We'll just text you all day. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. All right, so let let's uh, let's say we're going to dial you. I want to show people how the dialer works really quick. Cool. Yeah. So you, like Tristan was saying, you just click on the dialer on the left here that starts dialing right away. Um, and yeah, you've got a couple of options. You can also do transfer the call if you are like not so much with a new lead, but maybe it's like at someone you've set an appointment for, or you want to transfer it to an agent if you're an ISA. Um, then you've got like the mute controls and hang up at the top. So yeah, if they don't pick up eventually you can um, hang up like Tristan was saying on the first call. Um, and then when you want to dial people back, we've also got this quick convenient thing up the top here. So if you just want to hit uh, the person you've recently been talking to, that's a really fast way just to dial someone back. Um, that oh, that's well. perfect. So if I want to give them a call back right after, like I do the 20 second uh, call back. So then yep. uh, if they don't pick up, if they do pick up, just make sure that you do log the call. That's really important for your team and for you. You need to track everything. So let's say I left them a voicemail. Hey, Dan, I'm sorry I couldn't reach you. Just reaching out because you visited our website through Facebook, looking for homes. Don't want to spam you. What kind of homes do you want? That Something like that. Now, the next thing I do is I'm going to go to the text section uh, because I called, I called, I left the voicemail. Now I'm going to text. And yeah, I immediately text right after. And the text is super simple. It's, it's more like along the lines of, hey, Dan, it's Tristan with Keller Williams Realty or just KW Realty. And I just want to make sure I identify who I am. Uh, you yep. just visited our website. And I want to give, here's what, I, what a lot of agents don't do. They don't think of how the consumer is thinking. What's the purpose of them going to their website to go in on Facebook or Instagram and all these uh, IDX feeds or being retargeted and then they engage. The purpose is they want to know about property. That's it. They want to know about homes. They want to know what's out there that matches what they're looking for. And so if you come across a lead or an inquiry and you give them what they want or you make them feel like you're trying to figure out what it is that they want to send them the right things, they then turn into people that will will respond back to you. That's the difference. So here I'm saying, hey, Dan, it's Tristan with KW Realty. You just visited our website and I want to send you the right homes. So period. Then I say, are you looking for a fixer or are you looking for something to move into? Question mark. Yeah, asking and a that, question is key for sure. That's yeah, dude, it's so important because that first type of communication is, is really important. So then we send out that text. Now, it could read something along the lines of, hey, are you looking for a condo or a house? Um, are you looking for this specific city over this city? Whatever you want. Or just remember, you're coming from a point of value and giving back. You're just trying to hit on that pain point for them and showing them that you care so that you can help them out. Right now, they're saying, well, fixer or move into. So then we, we don't wait for them to respond. We simply grab that same text that we texted. So I copy paste that whole text. Sure. And I copy it and I go to the email. email and so you know, Dan has to add his email address there. Now we have it. I'm gonna just spam you now, Dan. Uh, so no there's, there's the email. He just copy pasted that easy. I try to make it as easy as possible for my team, for you, just so that uh, it's simple. And it's just, these are simple processes. Now in the subject line, I, I want them to know that it's not 
AI, that it's not automated. And so it's going to be something along the lines as, hi, Dan, I just called you and I got your voicemail. Cool. That's it. It can be something along those lines as the first one, but obviously you do have to call them and leave them a voicemail. Uh, I send the email, right? And then I go and then I, this is the most important part of this process. What I do is once this is done, now I'm going to go into tasks or action plans over on the right, right? If I want a quick task, right? I can create one right there or do you see the little lightning sure. bolt? The lightning bolt gives you little, little quick tasks. I can be like, okay, well, I think I need to follow up with him in a day because it's a new lead. I click it and it automatically creates it for me. Super easy. Or if I want to create an action plan that, that I have, that I've built out, that let's say every new lead comes through, or let's say I talk to somebody and I know they're three to six months out, I can click on this and you can see lots of choices pop up here. I can scroll through all these different ones that I have or that I've created. And some of them are already built into follow up boss too. So it just depends on what action plan you want. And some of these action plans are emails that go out automatically or tasks that are reminders for you so that they show up on your tasks. So you know you need to follow up with them. Now those, those are really important to me because if I don't set a task, I always tell my agents, if you don't set a task or you don't have an action plan, this person, you know, Dan in this case, this lead, this inquiry is gonna fall through their cracks. And we're not gonna be able to, to really help them like they want because the average stat here is it takes, uh, it takes at least eight follow-ups to connect with one person one online inquiry and if, if i remember correctly it's it takes the average agent 44 hours to reach out to a lead for the first time that's an nar stat that's 44 hours dan what happens if if you're called 40 or texted 44 hours after inquiring about something you wanted to know about yeah i mean most of the time you've found someone else right it's like if you think about like the last time you actually bought something or you needed to get something fixed in your house, like we have like a plumbing problem at the moment and it's like, you're not going to go with the person who responds in, in 48 hours. Right. Like no. you need your problem solved faster than that. So yeah, speed to lead is just, we still see it where some, some teams are like really good, uh, like, you know, under 10 minute response time. And then some, some teams just average a lot longer. And I think it's, it's just a competitive advantage you should you should be using basically that's so. a really good point dan uh, before i go on to the next section the exact same thing happened to us we had uh, a leak that damaged part of our cabinets and it came from the dishwasher i don't know if you had the same problem but uh we had a leak and somehow it had been going on for longer than i thought i stepped in the kitchen and the tiles were squishing and water was coming out of them i'm like oh crap right this happened last week while we had fires, by the way. So um, this is pretty nutty. And so I go, oh no, what happened? So I call the plumber guy that I, that I know. And I've always called him because he's super quick. Um, I called him and he didn't get back to me. And I wasn't pretty patient on this thing because my stuff's leaking everywhere. And so I waited maybe 10 minutes, maybe. And then I called like six different other plumbers, which <laughs> yeah. I was really impatient. And Siri, there's Siri. Uh, so uh, he called me back f about 45 minutes later, and I still went with him, but only because I trusted the guy. Um, believe it or not, the other plumber still hadn't gone back to me, which is crazy. Nobody had texted me back, nothing. Uh, that original plumber was lucky because I like him, number one. And number two, he got back to me the quickest. So uh, Dan, you're right, dude. We, we don't just reach out to one person when we need something, or we don't just go out to one site when we need right. something. Uh, it, we go out to a lot. And I think some people may think that what I do here is overkill, but we're trying to reach people not by spamming them. We're trying to reach them by giving them value. They reached out to you and they clicked next because they're interested in either looking at property and they're months out, a year out, a year and a half out. The fact is they were curious about something. And if you can fulfill their curiosity without sounding uh, salesy or spammy, you're going to go a long way. 
So uh, just to reiterate the, the beginning process here before I move on to the next one is, uh, first thing is I open this up, I call them through the dialer and then I, I double dial because if they don't pick up after three calls, I hang up. Uh, then I call again, I leave a voicemail. Then after that, I text them. You can see there, there's a purple icon or purplish icon. I text them there. Then if they don't pick up, I don't really give them that much time. I think a few seconds later, I grab that same text and I drop it into an email. And then I put subject line, something along the lines is, hey, Dan, I just called you and I got your voicemail. This way they know it's me if they are checking email. And believe it or not, a lot of people still check email. A lot of executives uh, check emails more than anybody else. Uh, I deal mainly in Malibu, Westlake Village, Santa Monica, Calabasas areas. And a lot of the executives that we reach, we reach by email. We don't reach by text. We don't reach by calls. We're reaching by email. And that that's to us, that's super important. So then when I'm done there, I go up to tasks or action plans on the right hand side. And I either set a quick task or I set an action plan that matches what's happening here. Now, I haven't been able to get a Dan and it's been a few minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do with Dan, you see, it says seven minutes on the text section on the purple little uh, text icon at the bottom of the screen. It says seven minutes. So I, I usually wait anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes, and you can wait longer, uh, 10 to 15 minutes be, before I text them again. Because uh, Dan, he may have been right in the middle of shopping, pushing a shopping cart in uh, at Ralph's or Whole Foods. And he was looking at homes and he was picking some cereal. He's like, oh, cool. This came up on my feed because people multitask all day long and they spend tons of time on Facebook and Instagram. Clicked it, saw a home, liked it. And then remember Facebook and Instagram auto capture your information. So that just came to me. And then next thing you know, he picked his cereal box, put it in the cart and forgot about it. Started talking to his kid next to him or started going to the register and I texted him. He didn't really engage. So I give him a little bit of time. Now I'm going to go back to texting him and I'm going to send a simple text that we introduced into the industry a few years back. We call it a nudge text. And that's a simple text. It can be simple as let me know, dot, 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 right? right. Or it could be a little bit more, it could be a little deeper and it could be something along the lines as uh, Dan, comma, I really want to help you out. I don't want to spam you. So let me know. And that's pulling a little bit more on your heartstrings, Dan. Like, sure. you know, I, I don't want to spam you, Dan. So just do me a favor and just freaking send me what you want. Right. And then, so, okay. um, yep. And yeah. I've texted with you, Tristan, you use emojis a lot. So I do. I do. Uh, oh, dude, show me those emojis. Yeah. Which, which are your favorite emojis to use? Like, Fire and happy face and laughter, uncontrollable laughter. Oh yeah, that, this one, right? That's a good yeah, one. that one, I love that one. And fire. Yeah, so you could you maybe like drop a little bit of humor and personality. I think like what you were saying before, Tristan, it's like, you don't want to sound like a corporate or like this douchebag uh, used car exactly. salesman guy. You just want to sound like a human, like you're there to help them, you're there to provide service. And so sometimes it's like, you use emojis with your friends. So, you know, feel free to use like a house emoji or if someone says something funny i mean you would send them back um you know the laughter emoji right so <laughs> exactly right and so people people want to know that they can that you that first of all you're human and when you start saying things like hey i don't want to spam you i don't want to waste your time did i do something wrong you start bringing emotion into this and they it shifts them into seeing you a little bit differently by text and I tell you that because people are used to you uh, emailing, texting, talking to them and saying, hey, are you interested in, saying, in buying or selling your home? I saw you on our website. When are you going to move? They're asking you these questions and we're all jaded, Dan. All of us are jaded. And if you just shift it a little bit and say, hey, I don't want to spam you. I don't want to send, I tell my clients, I don't want to send you a whole bunch of crap you're not going to look at. So do me a favor. Even if you're looking out a year from now, can you just tell me what you're looking for now so that throughout this whole year, I send you stuff you want to see? And they're like, oh, yeah, for sure. But nobody talks to them that way, right? Right. 
So uh, it's really important. Now, after I'm done here, I sent the nudge text. I, I, I use emojis. I sent emojis. Thanks for reminding me, Dan. Oh, yes. uh, right after that, you have a few different options. You can clearly uh, assign this to another agent if, you've, if you're part of a team or if you've talked to them and you know where you got them. I love putting the source. So right where Dan is, you see where it's a source. If I met them at the grocery store, if I got them from an open house, I could just go down and scroll down and find open house and then just shift it over to open house. And now I know where I got them so I can keep track of where I got them from. Then what I do is the information, that detail right there is really important. Do they have a lender? What's their price point? Do I want to tag them? Uh, we can tag them as sphere. And then here's the other thing that we do. You may want to write this down if you're paying attention still. And that's when we talk to people, we categorize them. Here are our categories. Uh, Dan, you're probably not going to have it on here. Is this mine or yours? This is Oz. Let me jump back to yours. We can, we can look in there. All right, yeah. cool. Um, so when we, when we talk to people, we categorize them in these categories. So here, here you go. Break out your pencils, your iPads, your, your phones, your note section. Uh, we categorize them into, into five things here. And if I talk to Steven and Steven says, Tristan, I'm ready to go. I have my pre-approval letter. Here it is. And I want to see homes. They become an A client. So an A client, it's, uh, it becomes lead dash A or buyer dash A, however you want to categorize it. But it's an A client regardless. I think we have it under buyer dash A with no space. There you go. A buyer. A buyer. A buyer. A buyer. Yep. All right. So let's just say we got a buyer here. You can save the tag. And now our A buyer, we know. So we keep them at the top. And every day when we're following up with our A buyers or see how they're doing, we're sending them property, engaging with them because they have two things that we want. Number one, they're pre-approved. Number two, they want to see property, right? Those are our A buyers. Now, if I talk to Steven and Steven says, Tristan, um, I haven't talked to a lender yet, but I know I can buy homes. Um, I ran my credit two years ago. And I'm getting my, I'm getting money from my mom and she's going to give it to me all and whatever. And mm -hmm. can we just go see homes? Right. Um, if I have a good feeling about it, like I know this guy's mom and she's got a lot of money and I know that this guy's telling me the truth or I just have a, a gut feeling and I go with my gut sometimes. And Steven sounds like a good dude. And I'm like, okay, you know what, Steven, I'll, I'll go show you homes the first round. Let's, let's talk, let's engage. Right. And he's a B client. He wants to see, he wants to see a lot of homes and he wants to buy now within the next three months. Right. So um, I think it's capital. I think I put like capital B. I don't remember how I, how I write it. Most of my team has it. We have it outlined. Um, right. I, I remember it's B buyer. B -dash buyer. Yep. That's what it is. I think. Yeah, there you go. Um, so what happens is, um, how would you set it for sellers? I'll, I'll go through that, Ruth. Good question. Um, so this person wants to see homes in the next three months, wants to buy something, but not pre-approved, not pre-qualified. To me, that's a B. Next is a C. That means they're out from three to six months, right? So they're out three to six months. You can create, yeah, there he is, three to six months. They're out three to six months. And that means, you know, they're not pre, probably they're not pre-qualified. They're not pre-approved. Um, but I need to categorize them so I know where they're at and I know when I need to follow them. So, so far I've got A, B, and C. I follow up with my A's almost every day. My B's, I follow up with them often. C's, I leave it a little bit lower below. And then I've got D's. D's are six months and way later. So six months and later can be a year, 12 months, um, same thing, uh, 15 months out, 16 months out. That's the point of this. Um, to be able to categorize and you can visually see who you have in your pipeline based on your letters. Now, the next thing after D is I have E and that's E, they're never going to buy, right? They're just, according to my qualifications, according to our ISAs or agents, they're just never going to do anything. And for us, that's okay. We just need to categorize them because these E's get retargeted, right? Dan, um, you guys connect fully with Ylopo and Ylopo, what they do is they, they retarget 
all of our database here through social media. So even our leads that we have as, as ease are still getting retargeted because who knows, they may have, after we talk to them and engage with them and everything, they may change their mind six months from now, a year from now, a year and a half from now, who knows? But the point is that we've categorized them so we know that we don't need to spend as much time with them because our, our priorities are A's and B's. Now, we also have a, a sixth one we don't use often, it's F and that's renters. We don't work with a lot of renters in our area. Um, in, in Malibu, it, renters are amazing because leases are like 60, 80, which is leased a, a property for $100,000. So it's insane. There are some leases that are amazing, but we don't usually work with leases, uh, which are renters. Now, on the seller side, Ruth, this, this answers your question. It's a lot easier for sellers and that's we've got somebody who who's signed their contract with us and is ready to list in the next month to three months. Um, we get some clients who have signed with us that are ready to go. They're just either remodeling or they're getting their home ready and they're ready with us, right? They've committed to us fully, right? I would consider that as an A seller. Next is a B seller, somebody that we've met with, they've met with us in person, whether it's at our office or their home, and they show some interest in actually selling, but we haven't been able to get them to sign a contract. And we know they're going to do it, right? But they're just not there yet. And we just haven't connected yet. Next is uh, C sellers. And C sellers are people that we've talked to over the phone that they sound like they want to do something somewhere in the next six months, six to nine months, uh, haven't met with them, haven't committed to anything, but they sound pretty serious. And then D is much later. Uh, some of the bold leads that you see out there, the company bold leads, uh, they have a lot of nurtures. A street text gives us better leads, better seller leads. And a lot of those seller leads go fall in the C category rather than the D one. So uh, check out street text if you haven't for, for those. That's our process for buyers and for sellers. But the point is, uh, Ruth, awesome. You have bold leads. Check out Street Text if you want to. Uh, all of, just remember that every single lead that you're getting falls into the, this, this CRM. And I mean, we've had, we've tried so many different companies out there that give us leads, but we've always had follow-up boss from like the very beginning. We're, uh, Dan, before we had follow-up boss, we had this thing called um, Basecamp. I think oh, yeah. was, I love Basecamp, but not dude, as a CRM. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what, that's what we used before we used follow up boss. And it wasn't like, it wasn't real estate. Uh, it wasn't created for the real estate world. Right. So sure. uh, when you guys came in, I was like, Oh crap. And then you guys brought a whole different level to it. But look, yeah. the purpose of this is to show you the process, but also to show you that everything that we have, every single one of our leads, even if we, we have commissions, Inc, we have Firepoint, we have Ylopo, we have everything and everything filters into this because this is our, just our central point of contact. So all of our agents know what the hell they're doing uh, and they have notes. Uh, Robert, Anima, what does Ylopo do? What does Street Text do? Two different things. Um, Ylopo's, Ylopo does Facebook lead ads uh, where the leads come through with a lot of information that's pre-filled out because Facebook has that information. They also retarget our database through social media. Street Text runs regular ads, but they're mostly seller leads. Um, so that's the difference between both of them. And they all filter in through here as well. Uh, now, depending on where the leads come from, they're tagged. Um, you're on mine, right, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a white oh. lipo lead. Looks like. All right, let, let's go. Let's take a look. This one's a mo This one's from six years ago from Dialer, from Dialing. Check it out. It, yeah. Then event, it eventually came into getting the retargeted by Ylopo, which is cool, right? But all of our leads are retargeted here. Um, what we, what's cool is that wherever your leads are co coming from, they're tagged. And depending on how they're tagged, that's the type of um, action plan that'll light up, right? So you see, you see here on the back end, it also ties to an IDX. So we can see everything that they're looking at. Um, one of the things that we do, if they have been looking at property quite a bit, and it's a lead that is now reactive, uh, reacted recently, I grab one of these properties that they're looking at, and my text to them is going to be, hey, Dan, I noticed you were looking at uh, 123 Main Street 
uh, a while ago. Are you still interested in this? Some people think that's a little scary. So some of my agents are like, hey, I don't like that approach. So we came up with this other one, which is a little bit more sneaky. And that's, uh, we open up the viewed properties. We grab the one that they've engaged with the most. And we say, hey, Dan, I found this great home that you might like. It's on Oxford Avenue and it's uh, 995,000. Do you have time to see it this week? And then right. they're like, oh yeah, I just saw that one. Um, I'd love to take a look at it. And you see how it ties to the back end of our CRM, of our um, IDX too. So those are some tips that, that we do here. Let me see, I have a couple, another question here. Dan and Tristan, oh, got that one. Uh, another question, what does Wailopo do? Perfect, answered that one live. Uh, any questions as we move along here? Anything that I may have missed, Dan, on this part? Anything you want uh, to show? Yeah, a couple of things I wanted to show you um, or share with everyone is basically to speed up like sending out your texts. We have text templates. And a big benefit of you have your whole team using them is you're going to get the reply rate data. So you can see here how many people actually replied. So if you guys are all testing different templates, you can see over time which ones are actually most effective. Um, and getting replies from your IDX leads or Zillow leads or whatever you're, um, whatever you're focused on. And then the second thing I wanted to show you, Tristan, I don't know if you saw this already, is, is you have templates mm -hmm. for emails as well, but you also have the ability now to schedule an email. So if you didn't want to send, you know, you've sent this initial email, but if you want to schedule an email to go out, um, you know, further today, uh, like later this afternoon, you can do that right away rather than coming back to it later. Um, you can also mm -hmm. schedule that on like their birthday, the closing date, any kind of custom dates which are in the system. So, yeah, that's just a new oh, thing. I love as that, well. dude. I love that. And I know you guys are working with scheduling out other stuff in the future, which is cool. Sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just pressing the buttons, dude. <laughs> All right. That's, that's pretty cool that you just added that property into there. Uh, one of the questions we had in the Facebook group was how does this differ? from Boomtown because Boomtown's got an app. So here's the main difference, and I need you to understand the, the dynamics of all of the CRMs and full CRMs out there. And that's that even, like I said, even though we have Firepoint, Commissions Inc., and we also have Sierra, um, we've always kept Follow a Boss, no matter what. Because uh, not only is, is Follow a Boss not as expensive as the rest of them, it's, it's our main, it's our main CRM that holds all of our data, all of our clients. And even if I, sw if I switch from, let's say I would have switched from Sync to Boomtown, right? Because it's not as expensive, follow boxes is like 99 bucks. Uh, it's not as expensive as Boomtown. I can, can keep my whole database there and I don't have to worry about losing it or having to export it and losing all the data points. Look at all the data points I have on Steven Chichi right? That's a lot. And I've had him in here for six years. So I would lose a lot of these data points as I switch over. So the cool thing is you can still have all of your leads come through from Boomtown, from Sync, from everywhere into this because they, they integrate with so many things on Zapier. Uh, and, and to me, that's, that's always been a, a key thing. Um, yeah, for sure. And Zapier is a little more confusing for some people, but you guys do integrate with a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, a lot of stuff we integrate with natively as well. Um, but yeah, I guess kind of like the philosophy behind what we're doing, like we're not providing any websites or marketing services or anything like that. We're just providing the sales tools to convert these leads, the sales technology. And so like over time, your marketing services are actually going to change. So you may have one website provider today, or you have one person like running your Google ads or whatever. But that, that's going to change over time because people are always innovating a lot on the marketing side. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do, um, or what the benefit I guess our clients get is they can compare these different services like Tristan was saying, like Commission Inc, First Y Lopo, and Firepoint and all these other great marketing services, but streamline it into one place. So the agents actually um, are not all tied into like one all in one system. They're actually like, you're not sort of being held hostage over there. You actually can just use whatever is the best uh, marketing service for you. And that should change over time. So like, you know, people buy zip codes with Zillow and realist.com, but over time, like they may get more expensive or you may decide to buy different zip codes. Um, th that's essentially the goal of our system is that we're not tying you to one marketing service. We're kind of just trying to work with everyone 
and just help you with the conversion uh, part That's of it. That's key, man. Very key to that. So two more things. One is a question I need to answer for Alvin Tapia. What's up, Alvin? He's a lab code agents a moderator. So he's a longtime friend of mine, does great on video. Alvin says, how are you handling the leads when you're not sure of their name because it's a Facebook lead and haven't verified their name? My drip campaign leaves the name out, of the mo out at the moment. How can I improve? Um, great question, Alvin. What we usually do is we call them and we just say, uh, we don't use a name. We just say, for instance, it, it, let's say it's Dan who, who left his information, uh, phone number, an email, and I have no idea what his name is. So I call him up and I'm like, uh, hi, this is Tristan. I'm not sure if you were the one who, who visited our website through Facebook. And then I just kind of leave it like that. And they're like, oh yeah, I just did that. Or no, 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 somebody, somebody must have used my information. Oh, I'm, and if they say somebody must have used my information or it's not me, I say, oh, because, uh, I've got a list of homes that I was going to send. I just wanted to make sure that I have the right person. Are you looking for homes in the Malibu Westlake Village area? Um, were you looking for a fixer or a condo? And as long as you're doing it with the right tonality, not aggressive and, and kind, people will respond back to you, won't hang up on you usually, and won't curse at you. So Alvin, you have a good tonality. I've heard you on videos. And uh, you shouldn't have a problem with that. In regards to drips or texts, I don't use their name then. Then I just directly uh, go into it, identify who I am first, and I then go again to contribution, show them what I can give them. Are you looking for a fixer? Are you looking for something to move into, condo, house, or so forth? Uh, but good question. Uh, Dan, I wanted to show everybody uh, to, yeah. to here to wrap this up. I wanted to show everybody the integration with MailChimp. Now, it's been a while since we used it on ours. Uh, but we still have MailChimp and I know you guys integrate and a lot of people say, well, I wish I could send out a newsletter, right? But uh, they can. And MailChimp, MailChimp lets you have up to 2000 people on their system for free. So you don't have to register and pay money. It's free up to 2000 people. After 2000 people, then it goes up a little bit. But the cool thing is all of your people in your database here on Follow Up Boss, you can put them into a newsletter campaign once a month or once a week and give them value and engage with them and have them come back to your systems. Uh, that's just, just another way for you to, to make sure that you're giving value to your database. Uh, but yeah. these, if you want to scroll down, Dan, there's a lot more that you guys integrate with here too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. MailChimp is actually a really good integration. Um, so even like, all the tags will sync across like what stage people are at. Um, it will also sync opens and clicks. So like you're gonna know who's like actively like opened your email like 10 times. You can see that in the system. And that just helps you a little bit with lead prioritization. Um, we've also sort of been improving like our mass email features in the system. So if you're not looking okay. to do like this pretty kind of like Thanksgiving type, um, you know, kind of like graphical newsletter, uh, just mm -hmm. a more direct text follow up. Um, you know, we have some cool features in there now, like the schedule email, you can actually, uh, email both spouses at once. And so I haven't actually seen this in, in other software, but like it will actually in the two field, you know, have both partners uh, in there. So it's like, if they hit reply all, it comes back to both of you. Um, and then you can also, one of the cool things for teams is you can actually have your admin set up a batch email but it will be personalized from each individual agent, like whoever is assigned the lead. So in the case of like Steven, who we're looking at, the email would come out from Jacob, but he didn't have to do anything. It was all set up uh, by the admin. Depending on who it's assigned to, right? That's right. And you can do that in MailChimp, but it, honestly, it's just a lot more steps. You kind of have to do it for each agent. So um, that's why we sort of, um, we actually used to use MailChimp for our drip campaigns as well. But over time, we're just like, this is too much work to go over there and set all these things up. So, yeah. And I love the contact information here, the data as he's hovering. The, you have the mouse on it too. But last thing here, you can hover over the emails so you can filter through the emails, the texts, the phone calls, the right. pin. Um, so you can just really quickly see what type of communication has been done. Um, but look, to, to us, it's been, it's been super easy. We use the dialer. We 
put the notes in, we text, we email all in one place, and we can do this on our phone because there's an app. So super simple. Uh, anything you want to add, Dan, as we wrap up? I just wanted to touch on those five points so that people um, know how to do this fully. Yeah, no, I mean, that's awesome, man. Um, I think if you're a current customer, we've got a big update coming out for the iPhone app later this week, just basically adding appointments to the app. That was like our number one requested uh, thing from iPhone users, uh, Ooh, just the yes. ability to see all your appointments, create them from the app. You can do that on the desktop app as well. Um, and then if you're not a customer, I mean, we basically just have like a 14 day free trial. It's like, it's super easy to create an account. It takes literally a couple of minutes to sign up. So um, yeah, if you just go to followupboss.com, uh, you know, hit free trial, you can, you can get that started. I love it, dude. So Joe Rodriguez is a follow-up boss user. He's on uh, the Facebook side of this and he's saying that he loves the app. He loves how easy it is to, to do everything on it and to tag his, his team on it. It's super easy as well. So, uh, good job, Joe. Love it. Awesome. Uh, Dan, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. We'll be seeing more of Dan and more of follow up boss here with, with lab coats. We've teamed up to bring you a lot more great information throughout this year and next year. So Dan, thank you so much, man. Uh, I love the follow up boss sweater. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I got the t-shirt hat, man. Dan's got um, the follow up boss t-shirt. If you don't have one, I'm sorry. Um, maybe when you hit up Dan or me, we might get you one. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Dan. Thanks Tristan. Thanks, everyone. See us. Bye-bye.